Welcome back to the Heal the Hurt podcast. In this week's episode, I'm going to talk about how to heal the pain from our past. I'm going to lay out the full process for you. Now, before I get started, I want to say there are a ton of modalities out there. They're all great. They all work, whether it's body work like yoga, acupuncture, massage, all part of the process. Mindfulness, um, EMDR. There's so many and they are all part of the process. They're all very effective. But what I've seen in my experience personally and in working with clients, what I'm about to share with you has to be in the recovery process. You can't skip this mindfulness. Most people can't get mindful because of this pain from the past. A lot of those um, modalities, you won't get the full benefit unless you do this. And so that's why I'm gonna share this part with you because this, in my estimation, is the foundation. This must be done to heal the pain from the past. If this part is skipped, while well, you'll get benefits from all the other wonderful modalities, you will not get the full rich benefit from them until you do this work, okay? So I'm gonna lay out all the steps to it so you have that foundation to heal the pain from your past. The first step in it is to grab a feelings list. Now I have one of these on my website. Go to www.thegreatnessmovement.com and go under resources and you can download the feelings list. Keep that with you. And for the next several days, as often as possible, check in. What am I feeling? And, and pay particular attention to any negative feelings. Just start getting attached to what you're feeling because this is a feeling process, not a thinking process. Pain is a feeling experience, not a thinking experience. Our thoughts are just a byproduct of our, our emotions, okay? Almost, in almost every case, our emotions start our thoughts. That's why a thought-based program will have limited effectiveness. This is a fee to heal pain. We have to do emotional work, okay? So now that you're kind of aware of your feelings, then after a couple of days, ask yourself, where in my body am I feeling this? Now you may feel it in the same spot every time, or it could be several spots. Make note of it. The next step is after you've done that, you get a sense, okay, I'm having these recurring negative feelings. This is where my body, I'm feeling it. Now ask yourself, what's my first memory of having this feeling? Now, for most people, they'll remember something one to five years ago. You know, maybe it was a divorce or bad situation with a friend. That's great. Write it down. Then go, what was my next memory before that? Same thing. Some life event. Write it down and keep going back and back and back. Eventually, you're going to arrive in childhood. Something happened in childhood, and that's the, where all of this pain is coming from, okay? Now, for many people, because their childhood was so traumatic, they don't remember much of their childhood. If, and many people say, oh, my childhood was perfect, and I'll go, well, tell me some memories. Oh, I don't remember much. Well, that means your childhood was filled with trauma. You dissociated and shut down and left because there was so much trauma in your childhood. It, it, many people really struggle admitting that their childhood was perfectly imperfect, okay? So you may not remember a specific event, but you might remember, God, this feeling, I don't know, I was four, five, six years old, eight, 10. That's all you need. You don't have to remember the specific event. You just have to remember the origin. What age were you when this feeling originated, okay? Now, once you have that, this is very important because in that moment, this is where you developed the emotional chemical addiction to this pain. This is the proof that our whole life, we just relive our childhood. We're all stuck in the worst day cycle because I just proved to you how you've repeated that painful feeling all your life because it's never been healed. And it's proof that your childhood was less than perfect. So now you have the proof that you can't run from of, my gosh, I, I am in the worst day cycle. My childhood was perfectly imperfect. I'm repeating the pain because our brain and body creates an emotional chemical addiction to traumatic feelings. And those get stored in our subconscious mind. And most of our life, all we're ever doing, even in our decisions on a daily basis, those decisions are based on the subconscious programming that we experienced as a child. What programs our subconscious are the deep emotional experiences. And since 70% of 
of all of our emotional experiences or all of the, the um, information we experience in childhood is negative, disempowering, and self-sabotaging. This is where that emotional chemical addiction got placed in us. And so this is the process to create a new neural pathway and shift that emotion and shift the subconscious. And that's why this is the, the base, the foundation of what we need to heal before we can get the full effectiveness of all the other, other wonderful treatments out there. Okay? Now, now that we have that understanding, the question to ask ourselves is, when I'm having that feeling, in current day, what are my mantras? So in other words, when we make a mistake, we go, ah, oh, what was I thinking? I'm so stupid. Or like, I have a client who gets really stressed out when um, his employees make requests of him and he just says, F it. Uh, you know, that's his mantra. Well, that all ties back to his childhood when his mother who would suffocate him emotionally, he'd just go, F it, I can't deal with it. It's too much. All right, and that's what you're gonna find. You have these mantras. Like for me, with my dad, it was, what's the point? I could never, you know, we don't have reality arguments. I'd be, you know, like I played pro golf and my dad, you know, loved golf, but would never listen to anything I had to say about the golf swing. He just wouldn't listen to it. And so I learned to go, oh, what's the point? These are the mantras. This is what keeps us replaying that trauma. So write all of those down. Now we're gonna get in, that's the awareness process. That's basically the start. Now we found our trauma, we found our pain, we see how it's running our life and has us in the worst day cycle. Now we're gonna start to repair it, okay? That's a five part process. The first step in that is grief and empathy. For many of us, we've never grieved, we've been in denial, we've suppressed, and minimized and condones our parents' perfect imperfections. We've never been in reality of how hurtful those moments were. And now that we're aware of them, we need to grieve it. We need to allow ourselves to cry, to be sad. It's sad. It's really sad. And most people go, oh, well, it was back then. I, it doesn't affect me now. Well, we just proved that it's affected you your whole life. And that's your minimizing, your suppressing, and you're condoning the perfect and perfect parenting that you received. You've never given yourself permission to feel the pain of that. That's the first step. We can't ignore and stuff that. So how do we do that? Well, the first step in that is we have empathy for both ourselves and our parents. None of us have been taught how to be a parent. None of us have been taught how to grieve or move through this. So we're doing the best we can. Our parents are not bad people. They adore us. They wanted to do everything they could to raise us perfectly. They didn't have all the information. And so they just, you know, they made loving mistakes. Okay. So we recognize in this process that they were doing the best we could. The next part of it though, to really, to fully be empathetic with our parents and ourselves if we, is we have to give them the pain back. And it may not always be our parents. It could be a teacher or coach or brother or sister. So, but it's that family of origin and those childhood experiences, okay? So how do we do this? Well, use that mantra as a guide, all right? Use that painful experience and what that mantra is that ties into it. And so this is a feeling experience. Feel yourself reach in and grab that phrase. It just doesn't matter. Grab it. Pull it out. Say mom, dad, brother, sister, priest, coach. I love you. I know your heart was to do the best for me, but this was hurtful and this is your pain. I will not carry it anymore. And so it's an actual physical release and it's a giving it to them. Now, do you hear? There was no blame in that. There was no shaming them. That was empathy for them. And in that same process, we're doing that for ourselves. I wish I'd known about this as a kid, but I did the best I could. And I've been carrying this pain all my life. It doesn't make me a bad child. It doesn't make me a bad adult. No one ever taught me. And so that's part of it. We're extracting that pain from us and we're giving it back. Okay. Now, the next step in this 
is to reclaim our inherent self. The, who we were before that person placed their unhealed pain in us. That's what happens in those moments when our parents roll their eyes or they get exasperated or they say, God, why wouldn't you? I wish, I sure wish I had a daughter when you were a son or vice versa. All of those different statements that we all experience. That's where we separated from ourselves and we lost who we really are. Okay. And that became the adapted persona, the one that suppressed, repressed, minimized, and condoned all the things that went on. All right. So we have to reattach to that. The first step in that is we have to rage. We never got to express our anger in that moment. We never got to defend ourselves because we were two, four, six, eight, ten. It's our job to follow an adult's advice or an older brother. We're, we're defenseless. It, we, we went along with it as a survival mechanism. That's why we're not to blame. But anger is a boundary. No! No! You can't do this to me. This is wrong. So here's how you do an anger. Uh, the, the, here's how the anger work, works. Write a letter. Now, this isn't something you send to them. This is just for your benefit. And here's the key. Make it really, really feeling focused. Don't go into the, you know, you. I mean, obviously the details of, you know, when I walked in the house and you slapped me or you rolled your eyes or whatever it was, but get into the feeling. I felt humiliated. I felt discarded. I felt insignificant. I felt ignored. I felt abandoned. List out, because that was your feelings work that we did in the beginning, really get in touch. That will help you bring up the sadness, but it's also gonna get in touch with the rage. And now the next step in the rage letter, look, I swear a lot. You know, when you're angry, certain swear words, just there's so much emotion to it, it communicates it a lot better than I'm angry at you. I'm blankety blank, 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 really attaches to that pain. And so that's what I would, I suggest you do is really get judgmental. It's okay. In this instance, it's okay to get judgmental. You selfish son of a, all you cared about, you blankety blank, 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 blank. Rage, rage, rage. Release it. Get it out. You've been carrying it for too long. Studies overwhelmingly show nearly like things like chronic fatigue, chronic fatigue, chronic pain, migraines, fibromyalgia, um, arthritis, cancer, nearly every single health condition is from the suppression of rage and pain. People that are overweight, almost always, Dr. Filetti discovered this, it's almost always stored rage. They're on every single diet and they can't let it go because they've never dealt with the rage. Please give yourself permission. And that's going to be very difficult because you're going to feel like you're being a bad child. Because like, especially for me, it was not okay for me to get angry. I just wasn't allowed. And so I had a ton of suppressed rage. I still have some that I'm still working on. It's a never ending journey. That's why I use that in everything. It's always a journey. Now, am I so much better than I used to be? Heck yes. But the process never ends. We're always on the journey. Certain aspects of the journey we will completely recover from. Others, it's a daily part of our growth, part of our life story, and what we get to learn in life. Okay? <clears throat> now that you have all of that rage mapped out, and you may have to come back to that letter several times to really get in touch and give yourself permission to experience that rage. It's okay. It's not a, you know, for some people, for some, it's so overwhelming to get in touch with it for the first time. That's fine. Pause, schedule it every couple days, once a week, work on the rage letter, but you'll start to get a sense when it's like, okay, that's it. Now we have to release it physically. And here's why we store all emotional trauma physically in our body, not in our brain. 
It's in our body. That's what causes illness and disease. I know when a client comes in with a shoulder, a leg, whatever, I know what emotion they're struggling with. Candace Pert showed that. I mean, it's been documented. That's how illness and disease is formed. It's the breakdown of a cell, a repeated firing of a negative emotion that's never been processed. And eventually the body breaks down. Gabor Mate, his book, When the Body Says No, is filled. I mean, I'll just divert for a second here. Clinicians, by just asking patients who are coming in to get tested for ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease, they just have to ask them a, simple, a series of simple lifestyle questions and belief questions. And over 95% of the time, without giving them a single test, they can predict that they have Lou Gehrig's disease because those with Lou Gehrig's disease couldn't say no. They do everything for everyone and everybody else. If you read the obituaries of people with ALS, on their, like the day before they died, they were seeing patients. They were still taking care of other people. Do you know that Lou Gehrig himself, his claim to fame was he played over 2000 games without ever taking a day off. Well, did you know he had 17 fractures in his hands during that period of time? And there's a story of a young rookie who got the flu and he refused to let that um, player play. He took him back to his own mother's house and had his mother nurse him to help. He did everything for everybody else, but couldn't take care of himself. That is a common characteristic with anyone with Lou Gehrig's disease. They do not know how to care for themselves. Okay. So all of that inability to care, all that rage is stuffed. We need to release it physically. So whether this is taking a baseball bat to the bed, I used a golf club. Um, some people, I also, you know, there were times, I talk about this in my book where I was punching my steering wheel. You can use a punching bag. You can go to a rage house. You know, they have those rage houses. You can take sledgehammers to walls and furniture and plates and glasses. Please take that anger letter with you and let it rip. Let it out. You will be a man. Like I just got chills, a memory of the exhilaration of just like, oh, man, I'm free. Now you may have to do this several times. We've been carrying this for decades. That neural pathway is pretty strong. It may take layers to move through this, but that's the step, third step in reclaiming ourself is the anger and physical release part. Okay, so now we're moving into reorienting the subconscious, creating a new neural pathway to replace that so that this becomes our best day cycle and move out of the pain and trauma. <laughs> I call this step the feelization step, all right? What we wanna do here is we wanna sit in the feeling of being strong, of being powerful, the self-protective version of ourselves. What does that look and feel like? Like, here's a great question. You may not be able to get in touch with that. So ask yourself this. What would I think and feel if I could never feel this negative thought or feeling that I have? If, if this pain were completely gone and I never had these thoughts or feelings ever again, what would be left over? What would I think and feel then? Well, every time I ask a client that, they say, free, light. That's the big one. They always say light because they've, they've been carrying someone else's pain on their back their whole life and it's gone now. Freedom, light, strong, safe, powerful, quiet, protected. Sit in that feeling. I would do this. I'd just sit there. When I first started this business, I had no clients, nothing. Well, I would just sit in my office. I'd just lean back. And I'd go, what would it feel like? What does it feel like? Yeah, I'm strong. I'm powerful. I'm safe. I'm now safe. Regardless if I get clients or not, I'm safe. Sit in that. Let your body start getting addicted to that new neural pathway of feeling your essence and who you're meant to be. Now, for many of us, 
we can't picture our authentic self and who we were meant to be. So here's a suggestion. All of us have somebody that we, I don't really like the word idolize, but that we respect and we're like, that's it. So look for a person, place, or thing that when you see it, you're like, yeah, my authentic self is like that. I mean, it could be a mountain. You see a mountain and you're like, if, if you know, hiking is big to you, um, it could be some sort of art piece that just exemplifies the beauty and strength of you. It could be a person, some famous person, or just someone you know. But if you can't attach to it, again, ask yourself, is that the best version of me? What would it feel like for me to exemplify and own the best part of me? Sit in that. Sit in it as much as possible at a stoplight on your ride to work. Look in the mirror. Ask yourself, man, what's it feel like to be strong and powerful? Start feeling and firing the chemical reaction. Again, it's a feeling process. We're trying to create a massive chemical explosion to get imprinted into our subconscious mind of who we really are. Okay? Now, we have to move in to the last piece. This is step five, self-forgiveness. See, many of us have a really hard time forgiving ourselves because we've just seen the worst day cycle. We've just noticed, wow, yeah, I that shame feeling, I relived it in this marriage and this relationship and then this marriage and then this career. Wow, you know what that means? That means the first time I wasn't responsible, it happened to me. But then as an adult, I made conscious choices to relive again, relive this against myself. I'm responsible. I'm responsible. Now, because we haven't been taught you're not to blame, because no one taught you how the worst day cycle works. No one taught you that this is what we do. We repeat and victimize ourselves until we choose to heal it. So it's not about blaming but it's about getting into reality of, man, I really did this to myself. And that can feel horrible. Why? Because of that original traumatic experience. Trauma leaves shame, tremendous shame. And I'm not worthy, I'm not good that this coach or teacher or parent or family member that's supposed to love me, hurt me. That must mean I don't have worth. That's devastating. And so when we recognize as an adult that I did this to myself, it'll trigger that shame moment. Well, we need to forgive ourselves. All we are ever doing is doing the best we can, even in those moments when we've all had this, we're like, I know exactly what I need to do, but we can't get ourselves to do it. Well, what does that prove? If I could do it, I would. I'm doing the best I can. And the best I can right now is to think about it, but I can't take action. That's just the best I can be. And we can't be blamed for doing things we weren't even aware we were doing them, as I, I always say that. You can't be blamed for doing something you were completely unaware of. As we know more, we can do more. And so now the choice is in front of you, you're learning more. And so this is the first time in your life you actually have a choice. You never had a choice. Like here's a perfect example. Do you play the guitar? No? Do you beat yourself up for not playing the guitar? Of course not. Why not? Because no one ever taught you. So you don't shame yourself. It's the exact same thing here. No one taught you this. You're not bad or defective, but now you have a choice. You can decide if you want to learn about, I learn how to play the guitar. And if you do, hire a teacher, learn about it, watch YouTube videos, whatever it is. Well, it's the same with this. You have a choice now. This is the first day in your life you've ever had a choice to go back and heal the pain from the past. You never knew about it. You never knew you were repeating it. And so literally you're an infant today. You're an infant and you get to choose 
what sort of life you want to live from this point forward. And therefore, you're forgiven for what you did previous to this. Okay? Now, there may be consequences. You may be paying alimony or you may have health problems or whatever it is. We can't run from those, but we don't have to shame ourselves for it. We turn that around and go, well, how could I have done any better? It's the best I could do. I forgive myself. I love myself. I'm okay. And what's the best process for me to love myself? Well, it's to learn the skills and tools to turn this stuff around. That's how we regain our authentic self and who we were meant to be. Okay, so that's the final piece of the process is letting ourselves off the hook, taking complete ownership. And that forgiveness is ownership. It's owning our side of the street. People really struggle with this, especially with relationships. They go, well, it's not my fault they were toxic. Well, no, it's not your fault, but you're responsible for letting them in your life. You did choose to date them or marry them. They're not responsible for that. You could have said, no, you're an adult. Our inability to, set, to accept that responsibility is our inability to forgive ourselves. We are actually shaming ourselves when we don't admit that truth. We're keeping the cycle going. We are victimizing ourselves when we don't take ownership for our thoughts, feelings, and actions. That's a power dynamic we're using against ourselves. And that's why it's so important. That's how we clear out that worst day cycle, that shame-based feeling. We must forgive ourselves. If you want to see more about that process, I coached a client live and it's called, it's a video called 23 minutes to forgiveness. Please pull it up. You'll watch her walk it. She could never forgive her ex-husband. Um, she'd been to countless personal development programs, countless counselors couldn't get there. And that's because people mistakenly, I mean, yes, we need to forgive the other person, but if we can't forgive somebody, it has nothing to do with the other person. It means we haven't forgiven ourselves. And so I walked her through this process and saw that it was actually, she'd never forgiven herself for her role as a child. And once she saw that, she was free of him. So if you wanna learn that forgiveness process more deeply, go check out that video. It's 23 minutes long. It's a little kind of, I'll be honest, a little slow moving in the beginning because I'm asking questions. All of my questions are leading her to her answer. I'm setting the, I'm like literally, it's like Dorothy in the Wizard of Oz standing there looking at the rainbow, wanting that life and going, God, how do I get there? And like she can see the yellow brick road right out in front of her, but it disappears. So she's excited and nervous to get there at the same time, but she doesn't quite know the path. Well, I literally just laid the bricks in front of her with my questions and she arrived at the rainbow of, oh my God, I see it now. So if you want that same experience, watch that video. It'll show you how to arrive at self-forgiveness, okay? So now, once we've done that, once we have that new neural pathway, that new emotional condition, then really double down on your breath work, your mindfulness, your manifesting, all of it. It'll skyrocket, like literally skyrocket. When you shift the way you feel, your ability to do all of those other modalities, you will be blown away at how successful they become once you have this base work and process, in your process. So there you go. I hope that helped you. If you think it did and you think it could help others, please like it, share it, leave comments, um, you know, how it could help you on your journey. And as I always say, enjoy the journey.